Welcome to today's episode of Class B Confessions, where we answer your frequently asked questions about living in a Class B RV. We've been living in our Airstream Interstate for over two years now, and we can't wait to share what we've learned with you. My name's Aaron, this is my wife Chris, who's Irene, and let's get into it. Today's question came to us from the Renault Cyclist on YouTube. And the Renault Cyclist asks, love the size of the interstate, but the size of the bathroom is keeping me from pulling the trigger. What's really, what's it really like living with such a small bathroom slash wet bath? So when we first got into this van, I will admit the wet bath was different. It was um, very new to us coming from a house. We've never been in a wet bath before, so there definitely was a learning curve and it was a little bit uncomfortable. With time, you really do get used to the space and we are just grateful that we have a shower and we have a toilet because so many van builds out there don't have either one. And for us, that's a deal breaker. So we are grateful to have the wet bath and the shower. I'm going to let Aaron show what we have in here. So I think the key to remember is that this is not the bathroom that you're going to be hanging out in for 45 minutes, doing your business, curling your hair, sitting on the pot. It's just, it's, it's just for quick showers and for using the bathroom. Sink, wash your hands, even brush your teeth quick. That's really honestly it. So what we keep in here, uh, some people don't know about the toilet paper. So this is just a waterproof toilet paper, which is where we keep our uh, Scott's thousand sheets, kind of a uh, degradable type of toilet paper. Septic safe. So that's a single ply. And then we have a bathroom only garbage to kind of keep our other little garbage uh, more clean and separated. This is our six gallon water container where we keep extra drinking water. This is the squeegee. This is really important. Chris will show you that in just a minute. Um, here is the uh, faucet, which goes up to your shower head, which is fairly short. And you have your pull out mirror, towel on a little hook. Uh, this thing, a lot of people like to take off. It's just your soap dispenser because it kind of gets in the way. There's not a lot of elbow room in here. But for me, I like it because when I'm in there, I can just quick hit that and get some soap. Couple LED lights, a vent up there. Uh, this is a clothes hanging rack in the back, which we honestly never use because it would block use to the, to the bathroom. Wet wipes is a huge um, thing that you need to have in a van for sure. This is a soft toilet paper that we don't flush that we kind of use for blowing nose and I don't know what else we use. Chris uses that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the shower curtain. Chris will talk more about that in a second. And we have a slow close slow close lid uh, porcelain Dometic toilet that we put in. We keep a little air freshener back there in the corner, some disinfectant wipes. And then honestly, this is all like cleaning solutions and stuff in the back. A little bit of the orange uh, septic juice that we use when we're boondocking. And that's vinegar and water in a bottle. So Chris, why don't you demonstrate the squeegee because that's one of the main important parts. Sure. It's also important when we do shower, we take out the towel, which I like to get these little finger sized towels because a full hand towel is really quite big. So these finger towels are great. Um, we take this out, we take the water out, we take the trash out and I take my luxury toilet paper out. I do have this, like Aaron said, for blowing nose and I use this for number one. As an RVer, we talk a lot about number one and number two. So true confessions, I use this for peeing and I save the crusty single ply for when we need to flush number two. So the number one wipes I do put into the trash bin and putting anything in the trash will definitely save your tank space, which is for a separate topic. So we get everything pulled out. We do leave the items on the toilet shelf because the water really doesn't splash that far back. When we're in here and we're showering, you really, I mean, it's hitting your head. You aren't really getting much water back there. So Chris is 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five, seven. And you can see that it's probably like maybe 5'11 in here. I have to duck in there. Um, some people say you can sit on the toilet and shower. I prefer, since my showers are about 
90 seconds long anyways just to just to shower quick and and get out that's it and then i towel off outside yeah one other thing i want to talk about before i demonstrate the squeegee is our shower curtain it's really easy to pull down it covers the door and it velcros closed so once you're in here then you close this up and you seal it so that the water doesn't hit your woodwork now the original shower curtain that our interstate came with was fabric and we did use that for the first two years um, we ended up really not liking it it got discolored and with it being fabric it took forever to dry it took like four hours to drip dry it was like a luxury linen uh, shower curtain where we wanted the plastic kind of crusty dries in about 15 minutes we wanted a more practical version also confession the fabric version really got gross if it was a hot sweaty day and we were really stinky like after a workout or something that body odor would kind of linger into the fabric and it was just gnarly so we ended up getting this one in and we love it a lot oh as far as smells i leave this open almost all the time so it's it's such a small room it's just kind of always venting so honestly it doesn't it's not like your whole van smells the room mm -hmm. smells for just a few minutes and then you know, obviously you can turn the fan on too, but I just leave it open all the time. So it's like an yeah. open air vent. With it being so small, it does freshen up quickly. So I emptied out the floor. I took the trash out. I took the water out. And it is a little bit of a pain to prepare your shower for showering, but that's just part of the deal. That's why you don't want to stack too much stuff in here to be moving back and forth. So we just showered. Great. One thing we do when we shower is we do flip flop our our strainers around so the full plug goes up in the sink and then this hair strainer will go down in the floor i do like to flip them back and forth so that when we're not showering this one prevents dirt and hair from falling into our gray tank because it will jam up your macerator pump hair is a culprit so we like to keep that plugged always and then after a shower you take your squeegee And if that seems like a long process, it's really not, especially since you're used to it. I think that's, I mean, it's like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, really quick. Yes. It probably takes longer to explain it than to do it. Yeah, to verbalize it, it just takes longer. So then I'm out of the shower, have my towel, get out of here. And then we go instantly into our bedroom, which has a nice privacy door so that we can change and get nude back here. And we do want to share the towels that we use. We use these, they're like sham style, chamois style. Um, but the reason we like these is because they are full size and they are super compact. So we're able to keep six towels on board that's about the same sp space as a big fluffy towel. And they dry in maybe like an hour just hanging it up on a hook. Yes. And then I like to use these head wraps. This brand is called Turby Twist. This is super old. I've literally had it from high school. You can see it's so ratty. But these are great, especially if you have long hair, to just wrap your hair up and not take up an additional towel space. So I hope this helped answer some of your deep questions about the wet bath. Um, do we like it? Yes. Is it inconvenient? Yes. But we're so grateful to have it. And uh, it's just really great to have on board everywhere we are. So leave your question below on a topic that you want to hear about next time, and we'll see you then. Oh, and I want to say that would we prefer a dry bath over a wet bath? Yeah, of course. But honestly, there's very few vans that have dry baths, and they're going to take up so much space that for us, it's not worth it. I'd much rather have that space in the living area than to have a giant bathroom. And I know some people really like big bathrooms, but for us, we really just prefer to have a small, functional, usable wet bath and keep the rest of our living space in the van big. Don't remember when